it's Christina again with the Artist Pod. Welcome back. Today I'm going to go through how to draw a Canadian lynx. So um, just like I promised last time with uh, when I drew the cat, which I'll link in the description below, I said that I would talk about more cats in the future and how to draw them, um, specifically wild cats. So I thought the lynx would be good because they have the tufts of hair coming down. And um, yeah, let's get started. All right, so when, you know, we're starting with that, we add sort of the base drawing. And when I added this base drawing, um, I didn't really flush out the ears yet, um, but here's the base. There's a couple different colors here though. So he's got a, a lighter color through next to his eyes and a grayish color kind of everywhere else. But lynxes also have some brown, so I'm going to mix some of that in as we go. So it's, it's very much like... Um, The previous cat, right? Like the the head is very circular. Um, a lot of cats' heads tend to be a bit circular like that. Um, and then, you know, he's got these almost mm, almond-shaped eyes. So within the face we have the circle here, and then we have the little tufts that come down, right? And that's kind of the basic shape of him. But again, I typically will start with the eyes or the nose if I'm trying to sketch it out to make sure I have those shapes right um, and that everything's sort of measured in a way that that makes sense. And I didn't, I hadn't decided yet how to do the black, so I left the black as what well, as as it is with just black until the end when I decided it's not the black was too striking. That's not exactly how they look. So when I'm coming up under the chin when I'm adding the tufts, right, like I'm just, you know, going right under, you can see where it ends, I'm going right under and just sort of coming down. Um, I'm not going all the way through, I'm making sure there's a little bit of a gap so it's obvious, um, but I am coming almost all the way to. So if I want to indicate that there's definitely a gap, I will leave a small gap until I can sort out how to do that. Often with very light strokes, I'll fill in, um, but leaving the gap gives me more freedom. But yeah, it's just a matter of sort of coming down at this angle, right, to, to get that edge done, and then coming up to rejoin the face um, and sort of reconnect back to his face. His eyes, a lot of cats have that, that sort of angle here with the coloration of their eyes. We even saw it with the the orange tabby last time, right? There's that angle. Lynxes have an extra little spot under too. Um, they have a lot of the black going through. And I mentioned it, I think, with the, the orange tabby. You know, you can see really prominently on the lynx a lot of his, um, where the, when I, you know, when you look at them, when you study them, you can see where their whiskers are joining back into their face. There's a, a clear color change into a darker color that's very obvious. And so I did, in fact, make sure that that was prominent on him. All right, and then we start adding the shadows and highlights. Um, so he looks kind of cool. He looked kind of cool from the beginning. He started out looking cool. I don't know that there was an awkward stage for him. But again, just like I do on most of them, and actually the reason I do this, so I have a lot of trouble with carpal tunnel and ulnar tunnel syndromes. So if I put my hand in the wrong position for hours drawing, not thinking about it, I'll irritate them. And it causes burning and pain in my wrist. Um, it causes pain in my little finger and ring finger. Um, and it gets really uncomfortable. So it's actually why I often will choose a light source that's to the right instead of to the left. Um, and that's because drawing to the right is actually puts a little bit more strain on my wrist. And so being able to press down is easier than lightly sketching. Um, lightly sketching puts more strain, and so it's easier for me to lightly sketch on the left side than it is on the right. That's why you'll see a lot of my images where it is highlighted on the right instead of on the left. But um, either way, the light source is coming from over here, right? It's coming in from the right and above and in front of. Um, and so now we're going to break it down by shapes within shapes, right? The, the general shape of the cat head was circular. 
with the tufts coming off. We haven't added in the ears yet, but they'll be, you know, roughly kind of like that. The eyes are kind of, you know, this almond shape coming through. The nose is that, you know, extended there. And, but when you're breaking it down by the, the light source, right, you're still breaking it down by that circle. You're adding the highlights here. Shadows are kicking in over here. We have the, the tufts coming off. So again, you're gonna add the highlight and then the edge here will be in shadow, right? Because we come to that edge, the light source isn't right next to, it's, it's a, off to the side and in front of. So that means the edge on the side of the light source will still go into shadow, just not as extremely on this side. The um, nose is kind of a circle here too. So where um, a lynx's sort of snout comes forward, you would add that in. Um, the eyes again are, are circles. And then you're gonna have a burst of highlight under his eye here, where that light's coming in, um, it's coming in, it's coming in, it's going to be hitting that spot on his, on his uh, cheek, that sort of pushing forward from his eye socket. It's gonna make him look a little bit more realistic. And then we're gonna continue that by adding, I must have changed my mind. I probably changed the color, sorry, I forgot I'd done that. So that's silver, it looks like I changed the color to a slightly off silver. And then we're gonna add the white. Um, you can see I left the nose a little bare because but I'd started to color it in and I often will have Google or I'll have um, a bunch of different images of the animal I'm drawing as tabs just above and I'll constantly open those up to, to reference what I'm doing. Um, and I realized that his nose had some brown on it. So I didn't think I had shadowed or added highlights of the grayish color too much to interfere with the brown, which is why I left it, but um, his nose definitely has some brown in there. For now, I've left the black, and at this point I still wasn't certain what I was gonna do because I thought the black looked really dramatic, but it's not accurate, and so in the end I do um, opt to change it, but um, I thought he looked really cool. Too bad that their, their black coloration isn't this, it doesn't pop this much, but they're still, they're very pretty animals. But the same way we did with the other, right? You know, the light source is coming from over here, so we're still breaking it down. We still have that circle. You can see we still have the highlights coming up, the shadows coming down, um, the circle for the nose. You can see the chin. You know, you catch some highlight here. As it comes across, it slowly goes into shadow because you're gonna have the highlight and then it slowly is gonna go into that shadow. You have the highlight over here. You're gonna have a little bit of highlight here. It's because the, um, the nose is flush against the face, as opposed to humans, right? Our nose shuts out pretty far, but their nose is this. This is what's jutting out. So this part is kind of flush against their face, which means this is going to catch some highlight. Just a little bit. You don't want it to be too much to overpower it because it is starting to round down into that shadow, but it is gonna catch some light. All right, and so yeah, so then I temper off the black. And so the way I handled that, because the, their, their black isn't really all that much, so it gave me a, a lot of chance. It's almost like a dark gray instead of a black. That's, that's their, spot, their spot. So I actually just took the same color that I did for the silverish color, and I lightly filled in between. And in fact, the closer you get, the more muddled that looks. Um, but you can see from far away, it definitely shows up. So it's fewer strokes. Um, and I didn't put as much pin pressure. So it's, it's light pin pressure, but it's not as light as when I come um, to this side. Um, it's, it's sort of a comfortably light amount of pin pressure that I'm not intentionally like holding back as much as I can. I'm allowing some of the weight of the pin to do the work for me so that I don't have to hold back and hurt my wrist. Um, and otherwise allowing that pin pressure to sort of, that, that light pin pressure and um, fewer strokes to fill it in to make it look darker without making it appear um, like it's the same color as everything else. It gives it that effect. And because we're adding that texture, it adds in that sort of hair color. You, you get the, the full effect. All right, and so here I started adding in the brown. So you can see I added the brown along the nose and even a splash of brown underneath on the white of the um, chin here where it's coming up to the mouth, I added just a, little, a splash of brown 
Um, I'm going to add some brown to the ears too. So when you're adding a splash of color like that, you do kind of want to make sure it's mixed out. So you don't want to have one spot that's just one color and it's just this one area that's just that one tone. You do want to kind of try to balance that out where you can. But the nose, it's very simple. Um, it just fills in that section. And then we add in the ears. And at first I wasn't certain what to do with the ears. And then I added them into that brown color, but I'm going to actually turn them uh, grayer, so I'm sort of fighting back and forth with that. Um, I highlight the brown color, so with the ears, you know, they're just, they come up and come down. The entrance onto the head, though, is here, right? Like, you have the circle of the head, the ears come within that circle because they're not on the side, right? And we talked about that in, in the other video. They're not straight on top. They are, you know, attached to the head, so therefore they would come in and come down. Um, and, you know, I still have that brown going on. So the, the ears are just, you know, this nice sort of loop. And then I'm going to add some gray, which is what I did just there. I just added gray on top of the brown to sort of temper that color. And then the white ear tufts. So just like we did before with the cat, the white ear tufts were going to kind of come up. And it's just, you know, very simple, quick lines sort of imitate hair, you just kind of come up and do these quick lines. So, you know, it's just, you're coming up and you're doing hair-like lines that are sort of following the contour of the ear. Um, and then you sort of fill them in completely. And then you highlight them appropriately. So just like with the uh, tabby cat, the ear tips here are going to be in um, highlight because this is the side of the light source, whereas here, the tips go into shadow and the part of the hair that goes back into the ear goes in shadow, but the middle is what's in highlight because that's the part that's going to be catching the light. As the hair comes up and rounds away, it's this section that's going to catch because this is going into the ear and this is rounding away from the light source. And then, okay, so when I did it, I realized I left this too much in shadow where the head connected to the ears and the white tufts. So I added a burst to temper that. You can see just doing that little bit tempered out that connection point, made it look more natural. And now I'm adding the nose. So lynxes, for one, have a black section around their nose. But when you're shadowing a nose, right, it's the same thing. You have this shape. You have the light source coming in here. So this would be in shadow. Um, and as it rounds down to the nostril, this is going to be in shadow, just like it is over here. And this is going to be in shadow as it comes down and it rounds down away from that light source. You're going to have that shadow of the nose kind of kick in. OK, so then that was um, the ear tufts, right? And ear tufts. I didn't do a lot. I didn't do it like I did the caracal. I backed off significantly where I just added a few lines really to indicate it. And I kept it in the same color family, which the benefit of doing that means there's less color. And overall, it means the file will be a little smaller. So it helps if I do it that way instead of changing colors. But I kept it in the same color family. And then I just sort of lightly added the ear tufts so that you could see them. They were clear. It was this lighter color, but there weren't many of them so that you could still indicate that they were, um, they're dark. They're not as prominent but they are there. And then the eyes. So um, I know I've talked about it, but you can really see when I round down, you can see like this stroke here. You know, I can't make a smooth line. I just tend to, but usually I can't make a smooth line when I come down because that's muscle memory. And that is a direction and a way of drawing that I never fully developed. And so um, it's an area and a direction that is difficult for me. And when I'm doing eyes, it notoriously causes me issue. Um, and you can see it over on this side as well, right? Like you can see my stray strokes as they're coming and being unstable. But that's fine. That's one of the reasons I, I do like this style so much. It doesn't matter that my strokes aren't straight and yours don't have to be. You don't have to make perfectly straight lines. Some artists can. They do phenomenal jobs, but you don't have to. You can be a fantastic artist without having the straight line. It is just muscle memory though. So the more you practice it, the better your muscles will be able to respond to that and be able to do it. So we take that, that green of the eyes and we're going to add 
the highlight here, right? So now we have the nice green highlight. Again, you know, that light source is coming from over here. So we have the light, you know, the highlight of the eye and here, so it catches it. And then we start tempering it into shadow through here, right? Highlight of the eye, highlight of the eye. We start tempering it into shadow as we go that way. But their, high, their eyes are hazel, so I'm actually going to add a burst of brown, and it's not a lot. So all I really did was I took brown and I made a few stripes of brown underneath and through the green. But on top of it, so that it was clear, you can clearly see he's got brown. Um, and even when we pull back, you pick it up because it's red against green. So you're playing there with color theory, brown and green, to create the hazel. It's easy to take one of those colors and back off on it and layer it on top of the other, and it's going to make the other pop, especially with the red on top. All right, so then I did um, the eyes, uh, the last little eye flare and the whiskers together. So that little eye flare, I always make sure um, I do the side and shadow first so that I've made sure I've, I've left enough room. But it's always going to be a strong burst of highlight. It's going to be a roundish or an ovalish uh, shape, typically. Sometimes it's a different shape if their eyes are, are contorted a little differently. Um, and it's going to be part way up because that's where, in theory, the light source is hitting the eye. Because our eyes are so reflective, we're going to hit this strong burst of highlight. And that should be on the opposite side of you, as you've done the um, burst around the edge of the pupil, right? That strong light line that I put here, that's that strong color, should be on the opposite side as the... Um, that light hitting your eye. And now with whiskers, it tempers out some of the black spots that you see in his face, right? But all you do is it's just these light swipes. You know, you, you come out and you make these light, quick lines, and you make sure there's enough of them. So the thing about whiskers is if you don't have enough and you're doing it this way, it can look wrong. So this is a case where you need to layer up how many whiskers you have, but don't put a lot of pressure. Because if you put a lot of pressure, it's going to really start looking very incorrect very quickly. Um, it's going to make the, the composition look a little off balance, right? Um, so if we flash that on and off, um, you know, you can see the difference. So I think adding the whiskers is important because without the whiskers, it, it, it potentially takes away... Adding the whiskers can push your composition in a way that, that can really make it much more dynamic and realistic looking. Um, so you do want to add them where you can, because sometimes these little details, while problematic and difficult to add, do so much to um, really help complete the look of something. But you don't have to make them hard and heavy. Again, just lightly allow your pin stroke to sort of trace across. Um, when I'm doing it, I'm actually moving my entire hand, um, my entire arm from the shoulder. I'm not bending my elbow, I'm not bending my wrist, I'm allowing my entire hand, my entire arm, to dictate the direction of the whiskers. It makes it a lot easier to keep your strokes light um, and makes it a lot easier to um, make a, some, a, a somewhat, you know, straight line there. So it's just, you know, these light, you know, you'll come down a bit, some of the whiskers will come down, you want to bunch those up, um, have a few coming down. You'll have some as they come out, you know, and you want to make sure that those are bunched so there's, there's enough of them and, you know, so on and so forth. So as you sort of round up with them, you know, you're going to go from these low spots to sort of rounding up as they come around. So they're coming into these different angles as they come around the face and you're looping them, but loop them as they come up and around like that. And then the last thing that we always do is we sign it. All right, so that is how you draw a Canadian lynx. I hope that was helpful. If you have any comments or questions, please drop them in the comment below. If you did like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you all next Thursday. Take care.